Welcome to Try Riot, the show that explores the mysteries of why ordinary people push themselves to extraordinary limits. I'm LG, and in this episode, The Philosophy of Triathlon. I'm going to talk about a book that dives deep into the meaning of triathlon, and uh, we're going to show an interview of a coach that dives deep into the lives of her athletes. But right now, I want to tell you about the book. Um, well, a few weeks ago, I was sitting at my office on break, and well, rather than tell you, here, take a look. Now, oh, one thing uh, that I want to, no, <clears throat> hold on, here it is. In the recent edition of USA Triathlon, there's an ad in here for Scott Tinley's new book. Where is it? Oh, look at the clothing. Here it is. Finding Triathlon by Scott Tinley. Don't know who Scott Tinley is? World champion Ironman uh, just a few years ago. But, hey, he wrote a book, and it looks pretty good. And it says, How Endurance Sports Explain the World. Hmm, sounds kind of like the Tri-Riot web show. Three days later. And thanks to the Amazonians who invented, like the Mayans invented the calendars, the Amazonians invented Amazon Prime and two-day shipping. Here's the book. First of all, I have to say that I really enjoyed this book. Right from the get-go, and I mean the absolute beginning, as in the first page of the prologue, Tinley is asking the very same question that I ask on this show. Why the hell would well over a million people spend thousands of dollars and hours, jeopardize jobs, marriages, health and well-being, all in preparation for a day of suffering? I mean, for most of us, the greatest pleasure is right before and right after an event like an Ironman and in between, it just hurts. Tinley gives us his most intimate thoughts on the sport, and endurance sport in general. But let me step back a bit. What qualifies Tinley in the first place to discuss the philosophy of triathlon? Well, how about professionally racing in triathlon for two decades, winning multiple Ironman World Championships, one of the founders of off-road triathlon, I mean, that right there, that just barely touches on Tinley's qualification. These days, Tinley's a lecturer at uh, San Diego State University in California. He's got more intellectual power than that group of old men that meets at the coffee shop to solve all the world's problems. Um, so not only is he an experienced athlete, but he's a pretty smart guy too. But getting back to the book. Tinley covers a broad range of topics that he ties together with sport, endurance sport in particular. Topics such as work, religion, family, marriage, children, aging, and a lot more. My favorite quote from the book is, if you live long enough, eventually you will die. If you race long enough, eventually you will suck. Now, I haven't been racing very long and I already suck. So I must be doing something right, <laughs> I think. But the way Tinley covers this subject is with a lot of metaphors. That's how he writes. And that's really okay because when you talk about triathlon this way, there are not many words to describe it. So using metaphors is really quite appropriate in this case. What I did was I read, I thought, I read, reread a little bit, and I wrote in the margins, underlined. These are things I haven't done since college. But when I studied the words, instead of just read them, I discovered some nuggets of truth. For example, let me just quote some of the things that I found. Here he says, <clears throat> a good sports story can make you feel things about an event or game that you didn't have time to feel when you were in it. There is something about a good sports story that moves us. It can transcend time and place and enrich our lives in ways we cannot define. 
he's telling us that sometimes the story is really bigger than the event itself. And another thing I found that I thought was pretty good was um, he said, it feels good to scream when it hurts or scream when it feels good, to cry with the fear of anticipation or the joy of completion and all the emotional peaks and valleys in between. Long distance sports in particular have become relief valves, conduits of acceptable purge. So there, he's saying that we can express ourselves emotionally through sport in ways that we cannot do in our daily lives and at work. Society accepts that we can express these emotions in sport. Interesting stuff. Well, I want to give a big thank you to Scott Tinley um, for sharing my passion for triathlon and writing about it. And uh, it's a book that I would recommend to just about anybody who's interested in triathlon. I was talking to somebody and I said, the most important thing for me is to be able to make a positive impact in someone's life, in the company, whatever it is that wherever I am, if I can be positively impacting other people or situations, then I feel good about what I do. I was eight years old when I started swimming competitively. I was at a summer pool where I lived and I saw the swim team and I thought I wanted to try that and so my mom took me and I tried out and uh, swam year-round um, 14 years competitively. Um, I went from you know doing kind of three days a week to five days a week to two a days when I was 12 and went on athletic scholarship and I swam for NC State and um, was fortunate enough to qualify and go to the Olympic trials in 1984 in the 800 freestyle. I first met Perry Maxwell in 2007 when I moved to Wilmington, North Carolina. And the thing that impressed me about her was that she not only knew how to teach the mechanics of swimming, but she gave a perspective as adults, we rarely do things we're not good at. We stick with the stuff we're good at. So anyone that comes to me that wants to learn this, they get like kudos, big kudos. Ones that come to me that are afraid of water that want to learn that, when was the last time you did something you were afraid to do and followed it through? And in this case, we're talking real fear because if a person doesn't know what they're doing, can they die? Yes, they could drown. So. It's not just teaching swimming, I'm teaching skill sets, I'm teaching safety, I'm teaching them how to tread water, I'm teaching them things that how to roll over from their belly to their back. All those little things that most people that are comfortable in water take for granted. Literally people I've had to teach how to roll from their stomach to their back. They don't know, they just can't get the feeling of it. And if they don't know that, then me teaching them to swim fast is useless. And she says, okay, yes, we're gonna teach you how to swim, but we're also going to break down those barriers that stand between you and your goals. I think there's certain people, a big chunk of people, um, that are intrinsically motivated, um, self-motivated. doesn't mean they want to get up at 5 in the morning and go jump in the cold water. But what it means is that they hold themselves to a set of standards that, in most cases, is very difficult to live up to, myself included, you included, where we always want to be better, we want to do well, we push ourselves to that point. Um, it's, it's a thing that many people that don't do athletics, don't do sports and things like that, it, they don't necessarily understand why you would get up at five in the morning and go jump in the cold lake. She gets into the minds of her athletes. I mean, she really got into my head. And Lord knows I rented out a lot of space in my head to her. And because of that, I feel that I'm not just a better swimmer, and I, I feel that I'm not just a better athlete, but I feel like I'm a better person for it. There's a sense of um, how you look at yourself and how you judge yourself. And sometimes, to be honest with you, it's one of the things that I have to deal with 
and semi undo for some people. Um, I think that people are very hard on themselves. Um, their expectations um, are such that it motivates them to keep going. I see a um, kind of a life cycle of triathlon for a lot of people where they get involved, they get very intense, they do a number of years of it and they race, you know, 30 races a year or whatever it might be. And then I see kind of a mellowing out um, where they're actually doing it and they're enjoying doing it just for doing it, not because it's just one more hill to climb to put their flag on. And that's the place I like. That's the place that I like for all of my people because um, I have people that have worked at it and they work and then they go do their races and they race for two years and they check it off their list. Then they're off to the next thing. I'm going to learn tennis and be really good or I'm going to you know, learn to kayak down the rapids. They are, in that case, sometimes adrenaline junkies. Um, a lot of people I've coached and friends that I have, you know, they do a couple races a year and they do it for fitness and they do it for fun. Um, I love that part because it wasn't just something to check off a list. It becomes part of their life and it becomes part of who they are. And they also have matured to the point that they realize they don't have to put it in a box of something that has to be done a certain way or at a certain level. You can just do things for fun. If you live in the Wilmington area and you're interested in an outstanding coaching experience, let me know and I'll hook you up and you definitely won't regret it. All right. Well, that's it for this show. Um, until next time, stay to the right, pass on the left, keep on smiling. For Tri-Riot, I'm LG.